How's it going everyone? I'm Landon with LMR.com. Welcome to those of you that may have recently found our channel. Please consider hitting the subscribe button as we have some really good Ford Mustang enlightening content. And for our regular viewers, welcome back to the Madness. All right, so today we're gonna to be talking about Ford Performance's 7.3 liter Godzilla crate engine. Now this video is gonna be more of a chat session we're gonna talk about some engine specifications. We're gonna give you guys some really, really good close-up shots of this engine. And then we're gonna close it out with a few opinions on where we see the future uh, for the Godzilla. So a quick history lesson first. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Ford ended its V8 push rod engine production in the late 90s, and they switched all of their V8 applications uh, to the overhead cam design engines. Well, fast forward several years later, and here we have another Ford push rod production engine that they are using for their Super Duty trucks. Now, when this engine debuted in typical car enthusiast fashion, everyone was like, oh man, that's cool. It's new. What could I put this dang thing into? And several months later, Ford Performance releases a part number, and here we have it, 7.3 liter Godzilla crate engine. This engine is the successor to the now retired 6.2 liter engine, which was found in the Super Duty trucks, as well as the first generation 2011 to 2014 Raptor. Um, I didn't mention the 2010 Raptor because believe it or not, those were actually still the 5.4 liter three valve. Now that we have kind of the history out of the way, let's dive into some engine specifications. Uh, we'll start at the bottom and kind of just work our way up and then you know progress throughout the engine as we move through it. So this is gonna be a cast iron block and within that cast iron block, we're gonna find a four steel crankshaft and cast aluminum pistons. It's gonna have aluminum cylinder heads and in typical push rod configuration, there's gonna be two valves per cylinder. We're looking at a 4.2205 inch bore and a 3.976 four inch stroke. The displacement is obvious. You've already heard me throw the number around. 7.3 liters, or for those of you that like to speak in terms of uh, cubic inches, this is 445 cubic inches of forward push rod power. Jumping back to the cylinder heads, we're looking at 2.170 inch intake valve and a 1.674 exhaust valve. Now for what it's worth, I like the small details. The intake and exhaust valves are constructed from steel and the exhaust valve is filled with sodium, which helps with heat dissipation. Uh, the compression ratio in today's standards, uh, I would consider it average. Compression ratio is 10 and a half to one and our firing order is going to be a 154.86372. Now one of the main specifications uh, that car enthusiasts like to talk about when a new engine comes out or an older engine for that matter, is the weight of the engine. Uh, the Godzilla weighs 580 pounds as you see it here. That's not including any of the front engine accessory drive components. That's not including the engine cradle. Uh, I believe that does include the engine lift brackets, uh, but if it doesn't, uh, these things don't weigh anything. As far as the dimensions are concerned, uh, we're looking at about 30 inches long. So that's of course front to back, 28 and a half inches wide, and 33 inches tall from the bottom of the oil pan to the very top. Uh, and we did take those measurements with the tape measure, uh, so those are approximate, they're not exact, uh, just to clear the air on that. Horsepower and torque, we're looking at 435 horsepower at 5,500 RPM and 475 pound-feet of torque at 4,000 RPM. Now in comparison to the precursor, which was the 6.2 liter engine, uh, that engine was rated at 411 horsepower and 434 pound-feet of torque. So in obvious fashion here, the Godzilla is cranking out more horsepower and more torque. So because it's a crate engine, let's talk about some of the things a crate engine includes. Uh, we'll go ahead and start up here at the top. We're gonna have a production F-250 intake manifold, production F-250 80 millimeter throttle body, traditional style port fuel injection, so uh, fuel rails and fuel injectors. We have our ignition coils, our plug wires and our spark plugs already loaded into the cylinder heads. And then we have a driver and passenger side exhaust manifolds with the heat shields. Taking a look at the front of the engine, we have a timing cover, a water pump, a water pump pulley, a few idler pulleys, and a harmonic balancer. Out back, we have an eight bolt flywheel bolted to the crankshaft. Anything that has to be connected on the engine, the engine harness is already connected to, and of course you have your two bulkhead connectors that will more than likely connect to a controls pack whenever it's released. So with any new engine, well, there's usually always some unique characteristics, and we're gonna talk about a few of those characteristics uh, today for the Godzilla. Starting at the bottom, if we look at the oil pan, you notice an integrated oil cooler and an integrated oil filter. 
Now, depending on what you're putting this engine into, uh, those may serve as interference. So I think as time goes on, you'll probably see the aftermarket develop different oil pans, uh, which will relocate the oil cooler and the oil filter. This engine does utilize a variable oil pump, and that's pretty obvious. That's gonna modulate oil pressure. The bell housing spacing is the same as a Coyote or late model modular engine. Uh, so what does that mean? Your transmission choices are pretty broad, just to name a few. 4R70W, 4R100, 6R80, 10R80, uh, and just to throw it out there, you know, a T56 Magnum or Magnum XL if, uh, if you like to bang gears. The Godzilla does have a zero or neutral balance, and one thing I thought was pretty interesting is that the harmonic balancer is not keyed to the crankshaft. Personally, I haven't seen that, so I thought that was pretty unique. For those of you wondering, yes, your engine mount locations are going to be different than a Coyote or a 4.6 or 5.4 late model modular engine. So depending on what you're going to be putting this engine into and the accessibility of the aftermarket, you'll probably see specific engine mounts for this engine and the application or chassis, whatever it's going into. So moving forward. After speaking with a few Ford Performance representatives, Mike and Steve, uh, they did say that a front engine accessory drive kit is coming, as well as controls pack, but there weren't any hard dates on that currently. Now the front engine accessory drive, which is FEAD, or F-E-A-D for short, is going to consist of an AC compressor, alternator, power steering pump, some idler pulleys, belt, and hardware for all that uh, to work in harmony on the Godzilla engine. They didn't have too much information available for the controls pack, but we can probably use past examples of previous controls pack in that it's gonna control the engine and then you'll splice all of the pigtails you know, to the appropriate wires on whatever it is that you're swapping this engine into. So in closing, I personally think, like any previous engines, uh, the Godzilla is gonna reserve its own little space or own little niche corner uh, in the aftermarket. And of course, as time goes on, uh, we'll see if the aftermarket you know, kind of jumps on the Godzilla bandwagon and uh, begins to develop parts. And at the time of this video, uh, there are currently a few aftermarket manufacturers that have committed uh, to making parts for the Godzilla. Now, if we think about it, we'll use the Coyote as the perfect example. It debuted in 2011 in the Mustang GT. We really didn't start seeing a lot of Coyote swaps until you know three, four, maybe even five years after the engine came out. Now, if we think rationally about that, the aftermarket had to develop parts for the engine so as time goes on, the swap got easier and easier and easier, and more than likely, that is probably going to be the case for the Godzilla. Now personally, where I can see the Godzilla finding a home for popular swaps, uh, obviously Fox Body, SN95, any Mustang for that matter, uh, I can see this thing making its way into older F100s, older F150s, the early and late model Ford Broncos, uh, big body Lincoln for that matter. I think uh, first generation Lightning owners could possibly benefit from this engine. You know, if they may buy a truck at a really good price, they want to do something different, they want to do something unique, they don't want to go back in with the 5.8 liter Windsor, I can see the Godzilla being a good candidate for first generation Ford Lightnings. Now because I'm a second generation Ford Lightning owner, I'm just going to start the pot here. You got a guy that has a second gen Lightning, again, may have got it at a good price, he's restoring the truck, he wants to do something different. Uh, he's tired of the old 5.4 valve with the Eaton blower on it. This may be a perfect candidate for his swap as well because again, as time goes on, we may see some forged induction kits uh, for the Godzilla, which this thing plus boost and a lightning or anything for that matter, that'd be pretty sweet. When I first saw the release of the Godzilla, I was kind of like, eh, man, it's a push rod engine. It's old school technology, yada, yada, yada. Even though it's old school technology, the stuff can still be good, you know? And the way the engine sits, let's just say the aftermarket, you know, just doesn't go super crazy with a ton of parts. The way the engine sits, I mean, it's a perfect candidate for a swap. It's, you know, reliable. Uh, it makes a ton of power. It makes a ton of torque. Uh, and personally, I like it. I think Ford Performance did right by offering it as a crate engine because you do have your old school guy that is going to want to push rock, you know, in his, in, his older, in his older project. So two thumbs up. Great job, Ford Performance. Uh, you guys always do a fantastic job. Uh, with offering uh, outstanding parts uh, for all of us crazy car enthusiasts. So, uh, hope you guys liked this video. Uh, if you did, give it a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to our channel for more great content and turn on notifications. That way you're notified every time we release something new. And you know by now, for all things 1979 to present Mustang and SVT Lightning, keep it right here with the Real Enthusiasts, LMR.com.